you see hope in what you do and who you're meeting mm-hmm. and, and that that whole aspect of things. Sure. Um, yeah, because I've I've kind of uh, identified chasing hope as something that can kind of cross uh, intersect with a lot of people's lives mm-hmm. and their stories, um, and all of us chase after hope for different reasons, and we need varying degrees of it at different times in our lives. And so I think what I ask people to do in regards to hope is is to look for those moments in which um, you have felt, you know, there's something bigger or something more beautiful or something more uh, cohesive to your life than the current moment that you're in, and, and look for those moments and kind of take snapshots with your mind and hold on to those for the times where life gets messy because it inevitably will. Um, but hope is essentially kind of a lifeline, I think, for humanity. I think if if humanity didn't have hope in something, uh, we would we would a lot of us would spiral and we would disengage from healthy relationships and interacting with people in humane ways. And so we see it happen. We see people who are hopeless um, act inhumanely, but we also see people who just haven't had the tools or the training to know that there's a life greater than what they have. And so I just ask people to imagine it either based on their own experiences, Mm -hmm. recall those snapshots you've already taken or look for places and people in life that you can emulate and and chase after. Right. Um, I personally choose, you know, Christ is one of my main people I chase chase (laughs) after because he's one of the freest people I've ever known and most hopeful. Um, but I chase after hope in iterations that other people have shown me too. Mm-hmm. Like simply getting getting the job done well uh, is a version of chasing hope. Mm-hmm. Uh, taking time to be in scripture is a way of chasing hope. Mm-hmm. Uh, asking for help when your life is uh, more burdensome than what you can handle, that's a way of chasing hope. And so chasing hope plays out very differently all the time. And so I'm calling people to chase hope in the grand the grand scheme of like grief when death happens and also when their kid throws the applesauce across the kitchen and doesn't know what to do anymore. Like we're all hope chasers. We all just need to kind of keep living. And it's not this overly optimistic view that everything can be peachy keen all the time. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just simply saying that it doesn't, it doesn't have to be as ugly as our natural dispositions would make it. um, Go ahead. Yeah, uh, the humanity of Christ is the part of Christ um, that uh, captures my brain, that captures my mind, because I understand humanity, right? So this undescribable part of us that's called our soul, like, yeah, that's that's captured by divinity. And I, I feel like the divine Christ does move and calls us to things in life. But the humanity of Christ is what we get and what we can breathe and live uh, along with other people. And so when we see him be sacrificial in his friendships, uh, when we see him being service oriented in his like day to day actions, when we see him take time and respite away from community and things that are like good, like mm. you can take a break from things that are good. Sometimes we think we only have to take breaks from right. that which like hurts <laughs> us or burdens us, right? right? And and Christ's humanity shows us like no, we just plain actually need rest. That's part of how we are hardwired. We're not actually hardwired to go all the time, <laughs> and um, and so this is the part of Christ that like m- that allows me to believe in Him with just pretty much wild abandon is the fact that He was human. I pretty much uh, I don't know what I would do because I've not been presented with a Christianity where Christ is only divine. Uh, the church the church does that one pretty strongly, but I've read scripture enough and been in the presence with enough people who get the human Christ that mm-hmm. I've been exposed to a Christ that's worth following, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. Because it's, of listening, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's interesting to hear you define it as a spiritual discipline because I don't know if I've looked at it that way, except that I have the expectation of myself that that's part of how my faith plays out. So mm-hmm. I guess the definition of that would be a spiritual discipline. Like <laughs> this is part of living faith out is listening. Um, you know, a simple answer of course would be that God is one of the greatest listeners. Like the invention of prayer is his hmm. and he invented it because he's a God who listens. Right. Hmm. And he, he is the receiver of our petitions and our thanksgiving and our adoration. But in order for him to do that, he simply has to be a listening God. Hmm. And I think as we try to 
we try to be of God to the world, we need to reflect uh, those strong characteristics of God that just flow through both the Old and New Testament and to us to today. That's that's one of the greatest um, constants of who God is, is he's a listening God. And hmm. so I do make it a, a habit to listen to people. I also find that um, there's there's personal lines in that story, right? Like I've had portions of my life where I wasn't listened to hmm. or uh, people didn't get the heart of who I was uh, either as a child or as an adult with ideas that that could move people. If people don't listen and hear me out, then it's really frustrating to me. And I guess personally, I never want to leave a swath of hurt or frustration behind me. Hmm. I'd rather leave a swath of people feeling like, that's that's a safe place. That's a place I want to be. And so I make it a habit. Um, you know, I'd really say my top three values, you know, service and hope are kind of just undergird everything I do, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. The top three values I'd hold are um, honesty, safety, and loyalty. Hmm. And I think listening kind of plays into all of those, mm-hmm. um, but especially into safety. Like if people feel safe around us uh, because we've, to them then they're able to share their lives and their stories and in a non-manipulative way they're open to our ideas Mm -hmm. because we've simply been open to theirs right